Hey everyone, hopefully you're having a good day. My name's Andy, my channel's Finding Value. Uh, today we're gonna do our market commodity ratio update where we look at market conditions and we look at ratios uh, to see how they're interacting with each other, to see how they're uh, moving. Uh, in a commodity bull market, usually what happens is you get a commodity outperformance of stocks uh, and there is the possibility, guys, that stocks still can go higher. Uh, they're not raising rates that fast. And if rates remain low and you have a lot of inflation, stocks will go up under that uh, type of scenario, especially if your dollar's remaining quite strong. But eventually, I think it will weigh on it if rates continue to go up. So we'll start with, with this. I'll give you my financial opinion. Uh, we've got the dollar behind me. The dollar's been basically sideways for the past week or two. Just moving sideways in this kind of area. Big picture view, we're right underneath this support line going up and we could potentially head lower uh, if we don't break through that, that line there. Uh, if we do break, the next one is that this big white guy, the big white line uh, that we could eventually turn back down. I don't think we're breaking higher. I just don't think the conditions support a move higher in the dollar uh, for, for a long period of time, uh, at least not yet. And then the 10 year yield, this guy on a big picture view, uh, is this a new shift to increasing interest rate environment? Very possibly could be with uh, the home starts going up and the inflation associated with it. A uh, higher inflation puts pressure on, on rates to go up. And we've got this nice, good 40 year decline in interest rates, 40 plus years. And it, we're, we're breaking it to the upside, the, uh, the trend line. Looking at commodities itself, we've had a very monster run here uh, in the short term. Uh, we've got a little bit of a down, these are weeks, down week today. We had a little bit of a down week, but it has a nice big um, wick at the bottom of it. It's come, the momentum's coming back up. And you can see that's what your wick is, is the momentum coming back up. Uh, so if you were to look at it from a weekly perspective, these are, these are like little bloody noses that could potentially... Uh, keep moving higher and we'll see where it goes. I don't like getting in the prediction games because what happens is if I make a prediction and I'm wrong, people say, you're wrong. Commodities are bad. It's like, no, commodities are not bad. It's just a blown call in the short term, which people do all the time on the short term. The short term is the hardest thing to predict. So I don't like doing predictions short term. What I like doing is I like standing back saying, look at this gigantic move breaking out of this big, this, this big falling wedge pattern. Now we could have a pullback where we pull back a little bit and then we take off again. And if there's been people who've taken very big picture views and they've put like uh, patterns that come all the way up uh, where we could go to like a thousand or, or eight, you know, where you get like a pattern that comes up like that, where we go all the way up to 800 based off of previous patterns where you tie it all to an upper trend line. Uh, we, we could have a very large move to the upside uh, at some point like continually for the next five, 10 years. Looking at, uh, let me go down to the ratios here real quick, guys. <clears throat> Do some ratio analysis, asset versus asset. Now here's the CRB index to the S&P 500. Um, under this blue line, I have on, under here, stocks outperformed during this period and money went into stocks and not into commodities. So money under this entire frame here, was going into stocks and not into commodities. And that ratio was showing us that. Now, if you look at the bottom right-hand side, that ratio is starting to reverse. And again, it, nothing goes up in a straight line. You've heard me say that before. Um, looking at it a little bit kind of in there, we got a little bit of a pullback and then we're getting a little bit of support. We're kind of right where we're at, but uh, we've had a monster move where commodities have outperformed stocks quite dramatically. We're getting a little bit of a pullback. And then again, Higher highs, higher lows, moving on up. That's what we're looking for, and that's what we're getting. Looking at the platinum to gold ratio, I would suspect that this goes higher under these market conditions. Uh, that's what it's done in the past. Platinum is more sensitive to inflation than gold is. So in a commodity boom, usually platinum outperforms gold. We've had a little bit of a scare come back here with the war. And the war does throw these things off a little bit, but looks like we're getting back in track and platinum's about to outperform. Uh, platinum is outperforming palladium. 
Uh, that's what this two big things and then the sideways movement, usually it's stair steps higher, uh, but that's looking good for platinum. Platinum's also, um, well, under, under a war type scenario, platinum does not do well because people run to safety. Safety is more gold. Uh, and it looks like silver perf performed that measurement, but it looks like we're coming back with platinum ready to make a comeback uh, under these highly inflationary time. And if if war is not what's on the on people's minds, I think this will eventually work its way higher with platinum outperforming silver in the beginning in the beginning of this commodity bull market. The gold to silver ratio, gold is lining up for a move higher versus silver. Uh, at least this ratio is doing that right now <clears throat> with this bullish engulfing. I do, I am waiting for this to come back down. I, I don't know why it's not coming back down. But uh, people are preferring gold over silver at the moment. We've got palladium versus silver. Uh, I would suspect that this is going to head lower. Uh, you got a nice big sell-off, and it's struggling to come higher. So I think we're going to head lower uh, in favor for silver. So silver should outperform palladium. Uh, palladium is kind of the odd man out. Palladium usually does opposite of the other metals uh, and does very well under disinflationary periods. Um, you can see it bottomed in 09 and peaked in 2020, the, the ratio at least. Dow Jones industrial to gold. We've had a monster move lower, the retest monster move. We're going to get a, probably a, a move back to this line here. 18 and a half is probably my guess. Uh, and then we'll see where we go from there. And I suspect that the, that I do suspect that we eventually, I should go back here, eventually work our way lower where gold and commodities outperform the Dow Jones Industrial Average. Under these market conditions, that's what has happened. Looking at gold to oil ratio, let me zoom in here on a one year. We've come back up, we did a retest move, and now we're heading back lower again. I do think this is going to compress lower, meaning that oil is going to outperform gold. I think we're going to see a massive performance uh, difference, and I think we're going somewhere in this like six, six to eight range. Uh, or something on the lines of that. If gold, and let's let's just throw in a little hypothetical thing. If gold is at two thousand dollars, I'm just gonna you know two thousand, and we divide it by like say eight, that means oil is gonna be at two fifty. Um, so I I kind of guessed. I took my guess. I said ah, oil is probably gonna hit one fifty to two fifty this summer. I don't know where exactly, but it's it's my guess is higher than where we are at today. And then. Copper's been making a comeback. It's used this as support. Been making a comeback and heading higher uh, against gold. Last bull market, we had a nice little outperformance all the way up to uh, 0.006. Uh, so copper would have to double its performance against gold to get back to that ratio. And I think that will happen. Uh, we're going to see a squeeze in copper at some point, probably a year, a couple years. And I think a lot of these. I think we're just we're still a little bit early. This is kind of the inflation front. The supply demand gap balance, you know, the gaps, the de market deficits are coming in all these materials very soon. Looking at, I'm gonna go back down here to some of the like lumber here. We've got lumber. This is a big long-term chart. We broke out and we're like flailing all over the place. Uh, but it still looks pretty strong. And it, it I don't, you know, I'm seeing these higher lows. Um, continually in lumber, uh, and, and we're getting a little bit of a resistance there. So you're going to create a pattern that looks like that, and then eventually we'll see if we can break out of it and go higher uh, for lumber. And that, that's we're getting to some pretty expensive prices there, and it's it's remaining quite elevated in this large expansionary phase of real estate. Nickel's coming on back. Looks like J.P. Morgan got its hands on it. I was reading a couple of of uh, uh, of things articles, and they're like. We need we need someone to control this market. It just went ballistic, and JP Morgan's like, "We'll do it. We're going to come in here and and control it." And looks like it's being controlled lower. Um, palladium, palladium again. I think it's going to head lower. Uh, it's out of cycle usually. It has a market deficit, but platinum is going to be the substitute eventually. They'll they'll be substituting more and more. Cocoa futures. I like the big picture view on a lot of these. We're just been moving sideways on cocoa futures. Uh, in a big pattern, wheat's gone absolutely crazy uh, vertical, and we're starting to come down from that vertical nature uh, a little bit. 
Soybeans is up there. It's rest. It's getting up on top of its uh, big long-term pattern here. Let's back out. There it is, resting up on top of it. Cheetah in the making. Uh, and then we're also resting on the top for corn. Getting some corn up there, guys. Uh, this is going to go to a whole new level, guys. We're going to go to another higher level where it's going to bounce up at a at a much higher level than where we are today. Uh, we've got copper here. Copper's been on the move to the upside. Nice couple of past three days, but it's it's been working and grinding higher. It's at $4.71. Uh, we've got all-time highs at about almost where it's at, just slightly above it. Well, and the all-time high here. Uh, looking at the housing starts, the housing starts came in at 1.769 million. Uh, so we're, we've gone up from last month. And again, guys, I'm looking at higher lows, higher highs. I'm not looking, you know, if we come back down here, it's not the end of the world. Uh, we're gonna we're gonna kind of move, you know, do the zigzag type move it, the, the stair step pattern uh, over time. But this is the United States housing starts, and we're in an uptrend, uh, which is usually inflationary based off of uh, history. So what does this all mean? I, I think higher interest rates is going to cause a rotation of money so long that the housing starts continues to remain elevated above its average. Uh, that inflation is going to come into the system. It's going to to drag interest rates up higher with it. And money doesn't like higher interest rates in stocks and bonds. That will eventually rotate out, but it depends on how fast rates go up. They are going up <clears throat> incredibly slow. The slower the rates go up, it gives the, the stock market time uh, and it could bounce. You could see bounces. You could see a big fat move to the upside in stocks for one last hooray um, if, if, if they don't raise rates after. Or if they raise rates really slow, it, it still may have a big move up. It's lots of money in the system. The money has to go somewhere. And that money is seeking assets. So if the rates don't really go up and they go up really slow, it could still hold up the stock market for, for a good while. Uh, and I still think commodities will do incredibly well. Bonds, I, I don't think they're going to do as well. Uh, in fact, we can look at bonds real quick here. We'll look at the 20-year TLT. <clears throat> and I would suspect that these um, you know, are, are, are going to be kind of doing almost like a topping pattern that, that wants to head lower. And we'll see what happens, guys. I'm not, you know, I don't have a crystal ball, but you know, we got a little bit of an up day today with rates going a little bit lower. I still think rates are going to go up. And then at some point, they may step in and hold rates down. And then we'll get a big sideways movement in bonds. So that's what I've got for today, guys. Hopefully you enjoyed the clip. Give me a thumbs up if you like the content. Uh, subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. And thank you for listening. This is Finding Value.